Hello and welcome back. This is David from www.figfab.com. This is the fourth video in a series about how I built my Pengu i3 3D printer. After extensively building and testing this kit, I truly believe this is one of the best value 3D printer kits on the market today. So much so that I contacted the manufacturer and worked out a deal. I am happy to say I am now distributing these printers from Canada, specifically Southern Ontario. This should mean great savings in duty and shipping for most North American customers. And of course you can still buy this kit from rp3d.com. This just gives another option when buying this fantastic value printer. Even if you're not interested in this particular printer, or you already have one, check out figfab.com. This website will be constantly updated with all aspects of home fabrication, and not just 3D printing. CNC, vacuum forming, and hopefully laser cutting will soon be in its future. So come by often and subscribe and like this video for updates. Now, let's finish building this printer. First, we'll install the power supply. For some reason, the bolts that came with this kit were a little too short to screw into the power supply. So I used an end mill to countersink them. This problem has been addressed by RP3D and is no longer an issue. Before you get too far, make sure that the voltage on the power supply matches your country's. We're 115 in Canada, so you just flip it up. Now it's just a matter of bolting everything in. Take note that the power supply is aligned differently than on the company website pictures. I'm pretty sure this is the best way to put it together. Okay, it's time to be very, very careful. Make 100% sure that the plug is not energized or plugged in in any way. First of all, you should use a soldering gun to tin the wired ends. The supplied plug just has a line and neutral, but I'll be switching this cord out for one with a ground later on, just to be safe. Carefully use a multimeter to check the voltage out of the three outputs. There's a pot on the side of the power supply to adjust the voltage, but basically you just want it between 12 and 13 volts. Now we can start wiring in end stops. These are what tells the printer when it's in the home position. You can basically do this in any order, but I start with the x-axis because it's the furthest away. Make sure it's pushed tight up against the end piece. It makes good contact, and you can hear that click when it closes. Start to plan out the path that you're going to use to run your wires. Just make sure you don't cut anything yet. I used a cordless drill to wind the four lead wires from the stepper motors. This should insulate against back EMF, but also it just makes things a little more tidy. Be very careful not to pull or twist them too much. Speaking of keeping things tidy, the kit comes with this black wire wrap and you should use it to keep all the wires organized. Now onto the relay switch for the Y stop. Different people have different names for these axes. Axes. Whatever. I call mine the same as my CNC. Front to back is the X axis, side to side is the Y, and up and down is the Z. Just make sure you can hear that click when it closes. This screw is very, very important. It's what you adjust to make sure that all important first layer is absolutely perfect. I put a bolt on the bottom and top of this for added security. As with the other stops, make sure it makes a nice clicking noise when the z-axis is in the home position. Since this end stop is so important and is just kind of clamped to the bar, I 3D printed my own stop block to make it more solid. You can find all my modifications as well as the accompanying STL files on my website. You can see here in the back that I've run each motor separately with black wire wrap. I'm sure it would work putting them together in some places, but I just really wanted to eliminate any EMF crosstalk. Another benefit to this kit is that the frame is made out of plywood. Not only is it more sturdy than plastic, but it also takes a staple. 
use the supplied zip ties to make easy, strong wire harnesses. I use this all over the printer to secure the wire. At this point you should have all the wires pulled through and located at the driver board corner. It's very important that you tin the tips of each of the wires. This eliminates any little strands of wire getting across and shorting out to the next wire. Use your trusty multimeter to identify the two pairs of connecting motor wires. You'll know you found them when you get a solid resistance of about 2 ohms. The motor pairs that I had were black, green, red, blue from top to bottom. If you're finding your motors are spinning in the opposite direction, simply switch the blue and red wires. I had to do this on my x-axis. Here's another picture of my completed wiring. There's a lot of amps going through that main power supply. Because of this, I ran heavier wire. 12 gauge, stranded. Top is positive, bottom's negative. I'm going to do an entire video devoted on running your motors in parallel or series on the z-axis. In short, they both work. I ran mine in parallel and this is how to do it in series. To make things a lot easier, I wired up everything except for the end stops and temperature sensors before I installed the board. Use the supplied standoffs to keep the board away from the wood. You can see here that another modification that I made was a little fan above the board. It's not entirely needed, but it gave me some peace of mind. I used my CNC machine to make it, but once you're running, you can easily print your own. That's the fantastic part about this machine. It makes its own parts. I'll have the STL file for this up on my website shortly. Once the board's fastened on, lightly twist the end stop wires together to make them more organized. These are very small connections, so be careful not to over tighten them and strip the screws. And finally, make sure you reinstall the plastic guard over the wires. Make sure the power is off when you do this, of course. Here's one last look at the completed wiring. Well, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for my next video where we're going to print the Mini MakerBot. Yay!